everyone, we're live. Hello, everyone. On today's episode of Top Clack, we're going to talk all about memes, alchemy, the plague, and, you know, couch surfing. Ooh, I like couch Brian, how are you doing today? I am doing very all right. <laughs> That's not meant to sound cryptic. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling okay. <laughs> I'm feeling okay. But I am happy to uh, to be here. It's Thursday, probably my favorite day of the week. We get to do all this sweet top clack stuff. Brian louder for once. Uh oh. We have yeah, different I, I, I change of setting stuff, guys. We should be louder. People were complaining that we're too soft. So we should be Oh, louder. okay. Am I okay? Should I move my mic closer? I don't know. I can always turn you up as well. But um funny thing though about louder or softer. I was reading the news <laughs> this week. Brian, did you read the news about the Amazon Alexa and what's been happening there? No, actually, I haven't. So it's actually pretty funny. They found a bug in the Amazon uh, um, Electra, you know, the uh, Alexa, the uh, the smart little speaker thing that you can talk to for, like, mm. random chores and BS like yeah. that. So apparently there was a bug where if you – because you can ask for some reason. They programmed it in. You can ask Alexa to laugh, and Alexa will just laugh, right? But the issue is, for some reason, that command pertained. So, like – Every few hours or every few days, without pro without prompting Alexa, Alexa, she would laugh at you. Huh. So That's like, pretty random. Be like, just sitting at home. It's 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 10 p.m. middle of the night. All the lights are off. They're about to go to sleep, and suddenly from their living room, they hear a ha 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 ha, and they're living alone. That's... They're like, what the, the ha what's happening? That's that's pretty great, actually. So I was thinking, like, what if what if that happened to like keyboards? You're typing, you know. I'm I'm working on a review, and halfway through my review, I suddenly see, ha 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 ha. That's pretty awesome. Do you have one? No, I do not. I, if uh, I got one, I'd probably get a Google Google Home because I have a I have a I have a Pixel, so it'd probably be best. Mm, for me. Mm. Indeed, indeed. Okay, well. We uh, we do have some news today going on, just like we always do, but we will not have a guest, so if that's the only reason you're here, we apologize for that. Sometimes we just don't have guests. Sometimes we just like to keep it casual. Huey and myself are still interesting people, damn it. We often have things to talk about, and we're, we're, we're cool too, all right? We are cool too. Yes. But uh, anyways, uh, we, will, uh, we will move on to the news. Hopefully we'll have a guest next week. Yeah. yeah, we will have a guest next week. I, I, I technically already scheduled with the person who's complaining in chat, Curlbit. Um, mm. The meme himself. The meme All right. himself. Um, but yeah, you can see him next week. So, Dixie yeah. Beck, is this scripted? Top Clack literally has never had like anything <laughs> scripted ever. Like at any point ever. Oh, man. <laughs> so no, it's not scripted. WWE ever. can't even make scripts this good. <laughs> yeah. I should start scripting things though, see if people can tell the difference. Uh, well, I have, I have, we have, we had one episode where I actually wrote out scripted sponsor spots for ads. That was the one time we had something scripted because I wrote out, I wrote out like three, two or three sentences for each of our sponsors just so we could try to like speed up because usually we just kind of ramble, which is fine also, but like it's a lot cleaner to not ramble. I should probably do that again, honestly. Yeah. I don't know. It sounded so much more forceful when I put it like in words like that though. Oh, wait, before I do the news, actually, I should share what I got in the mail today, which we can also talk about later because it's also in the news. But I do want to share because mm -hmm. I like showing and telling. I have a Switch, and this Switch is a Hako Switch. That looks like a box Switch. It oh is my a God. box Switch. Crazy. Crazy. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a Hako a Violet, I believe, the color they chose it. TBH, it's more of a lilac um, or a lavender. It's pretty light. I wouldn't say it's as a. Uh, I wouldn't say it's as intense, but uh, as, uh, intense in color as like the actual violet color. Interesting switch. Interesting switch. I'll move my microphone closer. And okay, well we'll talk about that when we get to that in the news because that is in the news. Yep. Yep. For sure. Speaking of the news, what is first in the news, Brian? Uh, first of the news is uh, a pretty hyped set, actually. GMK Olivia. Heck we, yeah. Um, yeah, so Olivia, if you're not familiar, 
um, is a, is a very regular top clack, top clacker, I guess. I don't know. She spends a lot of time in our Discord and watches our stream. She's a moderator of both our stream and our Discord. She's super awesome, super nice, and she does a lot of cool things. Right now, she's working on GMK Olivia, which is her namesake GMK set. Which is kind of like, uh, it focuses mostly on kind of rose gold colors because she's super into that. So, yeah. Um, the interest check is live now. I just posted it in the chat. If you haven't seen it on Reddit yet, this post got like a bazillion upvotes on Mech Market yeah. and uh, on RMK or whatever, wherever she posted it. It was really, really popular. It went over really well. So, obviously, people are really liking this set so far. Heck yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to look good on a lot of keyboards. Compatibility, um, it's pretty good. She's going to probably do a... She's thinking about doing a separate kit for uh, ISO, alternate colors, and ortho. So kind of combining those three niche crowds into uh, into one pack for all of them. Instead of yep. burgeoning the rest of us who don't care about ISO or um, 40%. Yeah, and so one thing I'm really, really happy about with this interest check is look at all this information. Yeah, she's ready. Like, every, like look, these, like, very, very professionally done renders, probably by Oblotsky or Zombiemon or something, they look great. She's got lots of pictures on lots of different boards, different colors even. You got your GMK renders there with all of your kit breakdowns. Um, there's, there's a collaboration with Rama to produce the aluminum exo caps in the same colorway to go alongside GMK Olivia. That's already in the works. That's awesome. She already has the vendors nailed down. Novel Keys will be the primary vendors with Candy Keys and Z Frontier being the EU and Asia proxy proxies respectively. Pricing currently quoted at 140 bucks for base kits and $45 for the extra at Novel Keys. So probably probably around there for the vendors as well or the the proxies. That is subject to change as the kits get revised, but that's usually how interest checks works. So, yeah. Pretty awesome stuff. Lots of information, lots of pictures. Love it. This is how I want to see every interest check. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of her adding the, uh, the, um, the I call it the Top Clack Heart novelty, because it was born and raised in Top Clack. A lot, of you, a lot of you were actually questioning it on the thread, like, why is your heart less than two? Yeah. It's just how I, we show love on Top Clack, guys. Yeah. I really love that, too, because, like, anyone outside of the Discord is going to be like, what? <laughs> like, like, unless you're, like, relatively active in the Top Clack Discord or you know Olivia, like, it just doesn't make sense. And I, and I love that she's keeping that, even though other people will be like, what is what? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, how, how do we feel about the set as, as, a, as, as an actual key set? What do we think about the colors and everything? I like it. Um, her original design that she showed me wasn't as good. Actually, she was originally planning on trying to use um, Rose Gold Legends, which wouldn't give you enough contrasts against the backing. Um, mm. But then it changed. I forgot. Someone in the Discord helped her out. I think it was Pixel, Pixel Ninja. Yeah. Suggested she choose one of the blacks. Um and yeah, it definitely looks. I think it looks best like, like this in terms of colors. Yeah, compatibility is there. I'm happy about it. I have no no qualms. What do you think about that HHKB backspace choice though, for the render GMK render? Uh, it's my second favorite GMK backspace. And actually, I wonder if you could guess my first. Um, I almost have a feeling you can't. The delete. Oh, it, okay, it is the delete, yeah. <laughs> One, 1.5 you delete is so baller, I love that, I don't know why. I got you. <laughs> yeah, okay, you, you, you're good, you're good. <laughs> you you know me. But uh, but yeah, if, if it's not 1.5 you delete for me, it's it's definitely where backspace is spelled out. Um, in the renders, it's on one line of text. In the GMK render, it's on two lines of text. So I imagine the GMK render is going to be more accurate. Oh, oh no! Perfect, perfect. She actually states, "Please note that the 1.5 U backspace key will be changed to a delete key." Perfect. This is a this is a Brian this is a Brian approved backspace. Yes, I highly highly approve of of that choice. Love it. I think it looks so much cleaner. 
Um, or, you know, Honeywell. Honeywell actually came with a 1.5U backspace and a 1.5U yeah, delete both. in the same profile. So that was that was cool. I was really happy about that, too. Wasn't there a set recently that had, it was a backspace and it came with the, the pointed box with an X? There was one set recently that had both of those. I think it was Hydro. That Hydro definitely had the box with the X, yeah. Um, which is probably my third favorite option. I think I like that more than just, like, the arrow that sits too far to the left. Mm. Yeah, I know what you're about. I don't like that. I don't like, I don't like that the either. arrow, just the arrow alone and too far off. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, well. So, bam, 1.5 you delete. Awesome stuff. Colors looking pretty nice. The rose gold is, uh, is not too in your face, so I'm pretty happy about that. Like the alphas are pretty neutral, so it's a nice contrast. For that, that's the only thing where I'm definitely say I I like the idea. I just want to see what the color chip GMK sensor as a sample really looks like. Yep. Yep. But I know she chose a Pantone, so they have a real Pantone color to go off of. So all they have to do, in theory, is match it, and it should be hunky dory. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. So we definitely wish her and everyone else involved the best of luck with this uh, interest check. I will definitely be getting a set imagining this is going to come to life regardless because there's enough hype behind it and it's official enough. So good stuff. Can't wait for this to launch on Novel Keys. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Um, okay, guys, I just turned Brian down because apparently he was way too loud. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah, you're you're yelling at them, apparently. Please quit yelling at wow, I'm actually talking like quieter than normal. Right? Interesting. Okay, I guess yeah, that must have just been too loud. Yeah, it's probably it's probably my 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 B. My B. Um, sorry about sorry about that guys. Yeah. Oh well. I thought I thought people liked it when I yelled at them. <laughs> you guys don't like Maybe. that? Maybe <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends on the context. <laughs> oh well. Moving on in the news, though, from Brian O1905 is GMK Phantom. Look at this. Another group by that already has renders. Yep. Kit designs was, going on. Love that was it. another reason why I, I chose this, because he, he already has renders going on. He already has Pantone color chips. Even, yeah, even nice enough to give us those Pantone color chips. Yep. Um, I actually I didn't know anything about this set until today. Um, interest check started five days ago, so a little behind on that. But it's been since last episode, anyways. So, um, yeah, it's an okay looking set. I'm not in love with it, but I I thought the renders were really nice. So I thought I'd share, because other people might. Hmm. Kind of has. I'm kind of digging it. It's a really. It kind of really... has like a slight Nautilus feel to it. It. It kind of it's for me. It seems like a really like a really deep version of like a, a really extremely deep royal purple almost on gold. So it has it really like regal kind of theme when I when I see it. Mm hmm. That's what that's what I think. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. I kind of like oh. it. I kind of like it. Oh man, one point five view delete too. Oh Ooh, man, everyone is this is this, good is this going to become more of a thing now? Because that makes me really happy. That makes me super happy. Yeah, it's got these. Uh, I like these novelties too. Like they're they're not too in your face. They're simple. Yeah. Very nice. Very, very nice. Indeed. Very nice. Too. Do you think this is too many kits? Base design, forties, ergo plank. Is that? Is that, do you think enough people will go for something like the Ergo Plank and the 40s? Because I assume those will still have um, MOQs of at least 100 units. Yeah, or 150 even, right? I feel like for those kits, at least for the like the 40s kit, I'm pretty sure other 40% vendors wouldn't mind grabbing a few extras to one, make sure it happens, and two, mm. stock up because... A lot of people who want like 40 styles, um, 40% layouts don't usually like to join group buys for them, but they like to just have them. So it's like, where are you going to get them unless someone stocks them? Yeah, for sure. Um, 
I don't know, man. I think I think you kind of have to do it this way, though, regardless of whether it's the best way to do it or not. Because, like, you can't just, like, you can't just always leave out ortholinear users or, you know, ergodox users. Because they, they, are, they are still pretty big in our community. I mean, people, there's a lot of plonks and ergodoxes going around. Stuff like that and uh, other 40%. So you can't really just, like, alienate them entirely and just, like, be like, hey, you can effectively never use a GMK set unless it's designed for it. I agree with that so much that if I had a choice, I would drop ISO compatibility before I dropped 40% compatibility. Ooh, that'd be an interesting topic to talk about. I wonder which, <laughs> wonder which is actually more prominent. I, I think... Oh. That's tough, man. What's funny? Think of it this like, way. Think of it this way. Would an international slash ISO set make MOQ versus a forty percent set? Hmm, that is a good question. I but don't like, think it would. It, what's What's funny is like when you when you think a lot of a lot of international users actually prefer like the forty percent and ergodox stuff. Remember, like the last Tokyo meetup? Did you ever look at the pictures? Everyone there owns ortho linear and split keyboards. Like that was all there was over there. Because for them that's like crazy and yeah, very niche. no, it's, they it want to be in the niche. It was nuts. So like you know, obviously people outside the states are really into, um, you know, abnormal kind of keyboard stuff, which is cool. But I, I don't think there's another way to do it. I think you have to do it this way. I think you have to have a base kit, and you have to have, yeah, maybe a secondary ISO kit. And try to drive the base kit down lower. That's so tough, though, man. I would do like, it. If I do a set like, in the future, guys, don't expect to see an ISO compatibility. <laughs> it's like the lesser of two evils, right? Like, what do you? who do you alienate? Do you alienate people that like abnormal layouts? Or do you alienate people that are not American? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know who's American? Jack Humbert. So I'm going to go with 40%. <laughs> And you know who's also American? Evan, also American. <laughs> this is this is so dumb. <laughs> okay. Let's uh, let's let's move on. Move on. Let's move on. Next on the news is um, an announcement from Mister Mito, which is S A Pulse Round Three. A lot of people have been asking this for a cool minute, which is going to be pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. Um, so one interesting bit about round three, which I put his official website on now, is he's working on a new mono kit, which I kind of like. I'm just scrolling past his page because I think it's really... If you haven't seen Pulse before, you're probably really new to the community, but this is a really, really popular set. But the set that makes it really different this time is Meadolet, which is basically an inspired by his own laser GMK. Um, it's a two color mm. blue on purple. Huh. I wait, are there any renders of that with the normal mods? I'm not seeing any. That's so a, a really unique thing about the Meteolet set, it's designed in the profile two two three 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 three. So if you scroll down the website, it actually has a comparison of what normal sculpted SA looks like and what um, that profile looks like on a slightly tilted keyboard. Yeah, and this is actually this isn't new for uh, for Mito at all. He did this the exact same thing with Godspeed SA. If you remember during mm -hmm. that drop, there was a kit called Cockpits, Cockpits, which I actually got. That was like one of the only things I got, and it was it was like literally just just like this. It was effectively a standard TKL with a few extra keys in that slightly flatter profile so there's le less sculpt because I like don't like SA so <laughs> I wanted something a little, little bit flatter a little bit shorter but uh but cool I love that that he's giving people that option um unlike Godspeed this uses an entirely different um key color from the rest of the set so that's that's good or bad depending on you know how much you like that and how much you use standard layouts but it's cool to have the option nonetheless he has so many renders it is absolutely yeah. wonderful giving people a good idea of what it looked like on so many boards 
Akina, mm -hmm. Mech 27, M65, Poker. Wait, M60. what is it? Akina? It's some other board that is being Wait. teased. Zabuban is working at a 96 key? Dun dun dun. Hmm. Interesting. Yes. That's, that's, that's the first I'm hearing about the, the Akina. I feel like I need more information on so that. So what did you think of the um the flatter two two three 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 mono kit for your Gosby? I've never tried that version of SA. So that's actually kind of curious for me. Um it was exactly how you'd expect it to be. So a very tall DSA that's just like this instead of like this. Yeah. Yeah. I I I loved I loved the Godspeed sex. I loved the Godspeed theme and the Godspeed colors, but I didn't really care typing on it because I don't really care for SA. It just kind of makes my switches feel less like switches. And I don't really care for that. But you know, I I love I love looking at it, man. It's some beautiful stuff. Oh yeah. Oh Speaking yeah. of beautiful stuff. You. <laughs> That's true too. <laughs> so over over on uh, our partner Input Club's store, Kono store, you can check out um, the interest checks for DSA Arcane and DSA Plague, which are uh, sets we've actually covered in the past a little bit. When um, I'm pretty sure it's Oblatsky, right? Yes, yeah, Oblatsky it is. Oblatsky design. and Gregor. Awesome stuff. So we've talked about this in the past when he first had the idea, and it looks like the interest check's officially up on Kono, which I imagine means it'll run on Kono, which is cool. Glad to see more people going with that option. So, yeah. How do we feel about this set? It's very intense. Mainly because of the novelties. No, I, 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 would, I, would, novelties I, would, I would use it with the novelties he has on the F row, actually, that top row. I wouldn't use the Enter or Windows key novelties. I think those novelties on top actually would be really cool for, um, like, a 40%, actually. Because mm. mm -hmm. they're, like, so unique. They're, like, actually, like, fantasy. Like, I would use this to play, like, for so if, oh, yeah, I would, I would use this to play Dungeons & Dragons with, even though it's pencil and paper. I have all, like, my character sheets and everything on my PC, this would be like a perfect, perfect set to like get into it. This for canvas because it's like parchment. Um, mm, okay. I, I like Arcane more than Plague though. I, I'm pretty sure. Pretty confident on that one. I imagine. Wait, Plague is kind of this like green, yellow one, right, or whatever. The green, yeah, the green. This, green. Yeah, the green and yep. I'm colorblind, guys, so bear bear with me. I'm I'm still pretty bad at this. And then the, the Arcane is kind of like a. I guess that's like a purple, probably purple, purple and blue. Yeah, purple and blue. Okay, <laughs> my my poor eyes, man. My poor eyes. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I kind of like them both, but yeah, I think I'd go with the arcane over the plague personally. It will be in a double shot ABS, a DSA profile, and uh, you get you know you got your kit, kit breakdowns here in the bottom right. So lots of compatibility. Pretty cool stuff. Um, I. Wow, okay. So this is something we actually haven't really seen very much of. This this is kind of like a GMK approach where you get everything in mm -hmm. one kit instead of having a bunch of kits broken down like we're used to seeing for signature plastics or other DSA or um, SA profile caps. Yeah. So that's that's pretty neat. I I worry a little bit about the price just because normally when you have that many DSA or SA caps, it tends to be kind of expensive. But I wonder if they're bypassing that a little bit here by not using signature plastics. So that could be that, that could be interesting. We may have something, some manufacturer that we haven't heard of yet before. I'm trying to find information on the manufacturer. I'm not finding anything. So I don't know. It is SP. Is it? Oblotsky is in chat saying. I'm, I'm trying. I was trying to read also where you. Said it wasn't SP. It is. I don't. There's no indication that. No, I never said it wasn't. I said it might not be oh. because I couldn't find any information on it. Oh uh, no. Um, yeah, definitely SP. Yeah, if if it's signature plastics, someone should update this page to just to say that, because like that's to 
to a lot of people, that, that could be a big deal. Andrew, when you watch this VOD, or Colbin, if you're watching, tell Andrew to add that. Yeah. Anyways, pretty pretty interesting sets. Obviously, we like the Blotsky here at Top Clack, so we wish him the best of luck on that as well. Yeah. So speaking of, you know, Arcane Magics and the Plague, of course, fitting well into that theme is Alchemy. And this is the interest check by Chris Swar Swirls? Sw Swires. Swires. I think it's Swires. Swires. It's Swires. So this is... So if, if you haven't looked at RMK in the last, like, six months or whatever, this is the guy that always does, like, the same picture. He has, like, a wood desk and a white desk, and he puts them, like, next to each other. I'm pretty so sure he... it's his floor and a white piece of paper. Is it? I don't know. That's what I would do. It's cheaper than getting two desks. <laughs> that is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he takes, like, pretty nice-looking pictures, pictures, but, like, pictures. every every picture is, like, the exact same thing. It's just, like, here's my keyboard on this exact same background, which I, I, people seem to love, so they're eating it up. Anyways, um, yeah, it looks like I, he's doing interest check for DSA Alchemy. I believe this is probably his first work in the community. I don't think he's been around for terribly long, but I could be entirely wrong. But lots of kits yeah. to choose from. Yeah, lots of kits there. Um, he does have an interest check Google form there if you want to, you know, sign up that way. But he only has one picture currently in, well, in the Reddit post. I don't think he has. He has a couple more. I'm scrolling yeah, through he, the interest check form. He has all the pictures, all the all, yeah. the all the goodies here. Yep. Um, I think the set looks fairly nice. It's it's not too in your face. It's my kind of my kind of jam. Just a little bit of accent. It reminds me a little bit of Quartz. You know, I'm I'm happy DSA is kind of coming back and people are realizing it is in fact better than XDA people. Come on, come on, guys. I agree. I like DSA more than XDA. Yeah, I, I, I think because we had a good a run of a few XDA sets, and I think a lot of people got those and are like, oh wait, nah. Let's go back to DSA, and I'm I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you think? I, I, I actually, I like the um, Alchemist RGB purple orange mods. I'm Yeah, those are those are sweet, actually. Those are, I think those are really cool, those icons. I'm, at least at the moment, not completely feeling the rest of this set. I wish, like, for example, for the, even, like, the normal base set, there was maybe slightly more contrast between the mods and the alphas but i think this is actually a really good direction for a set that he's going for i i actually like it for that reason i think it's very subtle very easy on the eyes i don't i don't always need like a really drastic contrast and i think i think this really this really satisfies me here that's good that is oh uh, yeah good so make sure you show interest for that if that's uh your kind of thing i'd like to see this go somewhere It'd be something I could pick up in the future, for sure. All right. Finally, moving away from some key set interest checks into, well, other interest checks, but heh, not for key sets. No. So we have the hollow keyboard. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Um, I, I just... So this is a custom win keyless only TKL. Um, I have one, like, the first sentence with the first picture kind of gets at me because designed at preserving a sleek and minimalistic look. And then the first picture, you see the giant hollow name right there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in his defense, the rest of the board is fairly, fairly minimalistic. Yes, fairly. That, is, that, is, that, is, that is true. Um, it, it's going to be milled from a single block of aluminum. Um, no bottom. It's just like it's top mount, and that's that's it. Yeah. So not having a bottom is kind of the the really unique thing about this board in particular. I wonder how much money that's gonna save um, for production. I wonder if we're gonna see a, a relatively low price point on this because of something like that. So, I mean, he went with uh, a fairly simple design that probably doesn't take quite as much CNC time as a lot of other customs, and hopefully we can actually get some savings because of that. 
But Would uh, what the you... savings be worth it for this board, though? I don't know. So, I, actually, when I first saw this, my first thought was was sound. How is this board going to sound when you're typing on it? Depends because what only... you're typing on. Ex okay, exactly. So, like, for instance, when you have, a, you know, an all-aluminum board, it's going to sound a certain way. When you have something like the M65 that has a nylon bottom option, it's going to sound different than uh, the aluminum option. And if you're like me, you really appreciate the sound of your keyboard. That's just, uh, you know, to me, that's a really big thing in the community. So I was thinking, like, with this kind of board, what you're typing on is going to matter a lot. So, like, for me, I often use a desk mat. So I'm actually really curious, like, how it's going to sound. Probably going to be, like, really, really muffled. But maybe if you type on a wood desk or, like, a glass desk or something, it could sound very, very, very different. And actually, that feature could be something really appealing to people because you can, you know, you, you can create, like, an entirely new sound that you're not used to because, you know, we're not used to those kind of bottoms. Maybe I'll just get a make a desk mat out of sorbethane. Super super muffled. I don't, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, man, it's hard I, really to really think about that. I'd, I want this to be cheap. I want this to be cheap because I want, I want to this try to be it like, out. Yeah, I want this to be like at most like a two hundred dollar kit with a PCB and everything. I don't know, man. He he pulled the Apple card and said milled from a single block of aluminum. And you know buzzword, when people buzzword, say buzzword, you, buzzword. you know when people say milled from a single block of aluminum, it can add up. I wish be, I wish he wouldn't I, that I, be cheaper? <laughs> Isn't that more efficient to mill from a single block of aluminum than multiple blocks of aluminum? There's more machine time because you have to go like deeper and like what's what do you do? Then you well, chuck the rest of yeah. aluminum to another project. Um, I wish if he went that route the plate was integrated with the case. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So there's, there's like no reason not to, unless he's offering different materials, which I guess could be the case though. He doesn't, um, he doesn't say that doesn't say anything about plate material or options, but again, it's still an interest check. So he doesn't have all of the info yet, unfortunately, but he does have a, a, a physical sample, which is pretty cool. Yeah, he has he has the prototype there, so um, does look pretty. Good. What is up? Okay, this is this is confusing me. That cut look out at, for the enter the, and right shift. Yeah, what is that about? It's just doing the wave, man. Like, what is that? Does that benefit something? No, I don't know. Is there I don't a think so. To do that? Yeah, that is that is the strangest cutout. I think maybe for... you just gave him the wrong measurement and like here's a prototype. <sighs> I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a very neat concept, if nothing else. Um, yes. Even even when I see stuff like this and I don't like it, I think it's good for the community because it's different. It's not just another rehash of a TKL that we've. Effectively you know what seen I think? Thirty I th times. I think he saw one of those bent steel cases, and he's like, "What's the best version of that I can make? That's custom." This is a really really cool version of that. Yeah. In that's... that in that defense, yeah. Pretty, One thing I do like neat, is if you look at the space bar, he actually has the cutout for the wire. For the space bar wire. That is pretty interesting. So it looks I... like that's accessible. So if your wire pops out because you didn't install it correctly or X, Y, or Z, you can pop it back in yourself. Or you can change out your stabs. Say you're using normal stabs, but one day you decide to dish out the dosh for some zeal stabs and throw them in and you can just change yeah. it out with the resol well, resoldering. It, it looks like it'll only be on the space bar, though. I don't think you'll be able to swap out the other stabilizers. It looks like those are still being yeah. blocked. Yeah, they're, the, yeah, the rest of them look blocked. So, yeah. that argument may be a little moot because you, in theory, only have access to the one space bar stabilizer, but I guess that's better than nothing. Yes, indeed. Cool. So we'll see how this project progresses because that's that's neat. It's pretty neat. You know what's also Some neat? <laughs> Memes. Memes. <laughs> <laughs> and the next one is a man man's attempt to go the farthest thing from what he's known for, which is the meme. So Crowbit is bringing us an interest check um, for the meme gas amount, sixty five percent. He also wants to bring back Bector. Well, convince Bector to either finish his schooling faster slash job stuff faster or quit 
<laughs> or yeah, T tell him to care less about getting his doctorate to come talk about keyboards on <laughs> Twitch. <laughs> But this is a project I've been following for quite a while. Krub has been very active in a lot of different discords, talking about it. Um, he's been on our show. He'll be on our show again next week. Um, he's a cool guy. Um, so he actually has a nice little to-do list. So we're actually he's making his way through it. You know, he's finished the design of the board of the PCB. He started work on getting gaskets. Now he just needs to put the prototypes together, make sure that's good to go, and then he can finally run it. Um, this is going to be a raffle style buy. He has already decided 30 units. He wants to keep it nice and simple 450 per kit. And he's like, here's your layout choices. These are the only acceptable layouts I care about for the meme keyboard. Cause this is my keyboard. And I always like that kind of mindset, like what Zeal did with his Zephyr. Yeah. Um, so that's awesome. I, way, I approve of that. Yeah. So cool thing because the bezel on the top is so big. He has a do daughter board. So it looks like we're going to have some USB C compatibility because USB-C is in fact the future the future 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 um <laughs> so yeah uh, what what do you think another 65% are you ready for the meme I, I okay so i actually think it looks really good I like how minimal it is. The angle looks nice. I love that top bezel with the uh, the meme logo there. I think I think this actually looks like an incredible board. Um, gasket mount something we haven't really seen a ton of. Um, actually, fun fun fact: I'm uh, community member Jacob's Mirror is shipping me his three five six mini to borrow for a little while, so I can check out the way gasket mount actually feels because that's mm. like one of the few boards that actually has been using this and obviously the 356 mini is quite a few years old now and not exactly easy to find and definitely not uh cheap so this this may be a different option if you're into that sort of mounting so the way it works for people that might not be in the know is normally when you have a keyboard you have a couple different options for mounting you have tray mount which is something like the fiel or the clipe or you know like the five degree case where it's it's all in the case and you drop a pcb plate assembly into the housing itself or you have um top mount which is like uh the x60 or um i don't know like most tkls like mech 27 stuff like that where you have a separate plate but it screws in to the top of the underside like the underside of the top piece basically so it's still it's it's not screwed into the bottom it's screwed into around the edge of the top and then that goes onto the bottom of the case and that way it's not um it's not attached to the bottom at all so you get like a little bit more flexibility a lot of people seem to prefer that type of method there's also like the tokyo 60 where you have an integrated plate method um like i'm using right now where it's it's effectively top mounted but instead of a separate plate that screws in it's just part of the top of the case that's arguably a bit more sturdy because you're not screwing in anything. Um, a lot of people like that as well. Gasket mounts a little bit different. So here there is there are going to be gaskets um, between the bottom of the case and the plate. The plate will, by the looks of it, it'll it'll just sit on top of the gaskets on in the bottom piece, and then everything else will kind of just like go over the top of it. So not top mounted, not tray mounted, but. This is something that apparently gives an insanely unique typing feel that I am hoping to experience very soon when I get this 356. Uh, apparently it's freaking amazing. So pretty, pretty cool stuff there. Definitely excited to see that. And it, yeah. it's, you know, it's something different because we don't usually see this. So I'm always for that. I think it's an amazing looking board. I love the concept. 450 bucks plus shipping. It's a little, a little, uh, def well, definitely out of my uh, budget, but uh, may maybe a tad bit expensive. I get, I get it. He's only doing thirty units, but you know, that's just the way it is. The way it is. What do you, uh, what do you think about this board? I want to try it out, cause gas come out different, unique. Um, pricing wise, yeah, that's. I think that's pretty acceptable to be honest. Even for four fifty per kit, it's only thirty. Not not too many. Um, I believe it's gonna be all made in uh, the U.S., which is which is hunky dory. Um, yeah, and that does drive up price. 
like if this was all being done in China, he'd probably hit uh, a noticeably lower price than 450. But that's a trade off that uh, the designer just has to make themselves, just like um, Devin 27 did for the Mech 27 V2. All, all Canada. Done in Canada. All Canadian, and it turned out to be $100 more expensive. And But, you know, the final product still looks amazing. So, you yeah, know, maybe there's some merit to that. That's not for that's not for us to decide. Yeah, yeah. So check all this and just check if you're interested in information about gas mounts or memes or just even memes. or just even memes. I'm not even talking about this meme either. Um, yeah, classic <laughs> memes. Yeah. Uh, so he, he did mention at one point that he might have like a prototype or some revision, like review unit floating around between people. So I, I hope at one point we can get our hands on that. That, that would be pretty cool. Then we could uh, check that out, review it, see how it is. Why is the autofocus going freaking nuts on my camera? Come on, man. All right. So definitely wish him the best of luck there. Hopefully the price isn't too high and he actually gets everyone that he wants to join and Krubit we will try our best to bring back Bektor yeah that's that's a lot less up to us and a lot more up to him <laughs> so something um, new going on that he can talk a little bit about yeah. are these new Hakko switches I mean, okay, so I've, I've been seeing I've been seeing this kind of argument a little bit lately where people are like, it's not a new Switch, it's just a different spring. And, like, you're not necessarily wrong. But in the same sense, like, then, you know, Gateron clears reds, and blacks, and yellows are all the same Switch. Which, I mean, they are. They're just a different There's a Gateron linear. Like, yeah, but, like, you don't, you don't go, oh, you have, you know, Gateron reds, Gateron yellows, and they're the same. Because, I mean, they're, they're not. And <laughs> honestly, with tactile Switches, like we've seen in the past, changing the spring can change the way it feels. Look at Zelios, for example. He's demonstrated that but, quite well. Yes, yes, very well. So round eight and newer, 67 and 78 gram Zelios feel noticeably different and uh, better, in my opinion, better than, than previous revisions of those weighted Zelios because the springs are different. Look at the Hakko True versus the Hakko Clear. Same switch, different spring, feels different. In the same sense, we have the Hakko Violet here, which is... Presumably going to be a, probably a little bit better for most people. The, it does use a lighter spring. It uses a 50 gram spring. I asked if that was actuation or full compression force, and they told me full compression force, you moron. We don't do anything via actuation numbers. And I was like, yes, that's we're not right. cherry. Yes. So, but but again, a 50 gram actuation spring. That's pretty light. That's uh, that's that's lighter than, for instance, a um, an MX Red Gateron Red. So how do they, how do they feel to you, Huey? Do they feel too light, or do you feel that the curve adds enough weight? I mean, I only have I'm, I'm only testing them switches in my hand. I'm still working I, on you know depopulating this K type for our k typing sounds because that brings in the YouTube views. Um, yeah, <laughs> but just like li like raw straight first impressions. Just put one in your hand. Tell us your thoughts on it right now, and then we'll get more later when you actually can type on a full board. Yeah, they're uh, they're they're pretty they're pretty light TBH. Um, the tactility is more of a traditional tactility people are used to, and people will appreciate more, which is which is pretty good. So, does it not have that curve that starts at the top like um, the trues and clears tend to? It still does. I mean, the stem the stem hasn't changed. It just you you feel it. The, it increases the mid bump a little bit more, so that's why it feels a bit more traditional. Um, but you still get that 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 intro bump. I think this is a switch to that people thought the Hako clears would be to begin with. That's why I think it is. Okay, okay, interesting. So I mean, obviously, one of the major things people have been talking about lately with Hako switches with clears and trues is that they apparently feel linear i totally disagree but for those people do you think this would be a better quote unquote more tactile experience yeah yeah i know what those people are looking for and this is closer to what they are looking for rather than a different kind of tactile feel that input club is going for for the trues okay definitely so hopefully this will solve that problem for the people that are having that problem 
that shouldn't be having that problem if your fingers aren't numb. Um, yeah, so obviously you can check those out right here at Kono.store. Awesome stuff. Uh, it does have the pre-order pricing right now, so it's 55 bucks uh, plus shipping, I imagine. We'll get you 120 switches, just kind of like the other ones, the clears and trues. Pretty cool stuff. But um, other than the spring, it's still the same switch. But yeah. like we've seen already, a spring can change a lot in how the switch feels. So yes. maybe give these a chance if clears and trues were either too heavy for you or too linear for you. <laughs> this <laughs> I'm like so salty about that. I <laughs> I really am. But uh, but yeah, this could be could potentially be a really good option for you. Can't wait to try some of these out and uh, get Huey's impressions since he is currently the only person that has enough for a board. Yeah. Good stuff there. Next up, we have the Couch Surfer. Ryan, Ryan what is this Couch Surfer? Okay, so this is a little bit interesting. Um, I saw this on Geek Hack earlier, and it. it What's this actually really hit home for me? Because since if anybody hasn't noticed, I actually rearranged my room. I'm in a totally different spot, and the way I have it set up now, I'm actually going to change some things a little bit more. But eventually, there's going to be like a big TV over here, and like my bed is like over there against the wall, <clears throat> and I I need something wireless. Like I'm gonna I'll probably do like a really cheap HTPC build to hook it up to my my, my uh, TV, or like a Raspberry Pi or something. But I need like a wireless solution for like a keyboard and a mouse particularly would be awesome. And I saw this and I was like, oh shit, this is sweet. Uh, this this is maybe a little bit more extreme than I need, but it, it still kind of hit home with me. So this is effectively uh, something that is like a plank of wood with a keyboard built into it and enough space on the right side for a mouse. And it looks like he has a mouse pad attached here. Yes. Um, I don't know how he has it attached. Maybe it's like glued or something. But uh, either way, it's 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 pretty interesting. The prototype that he has here that he's showing off isn't um, the wood isn't finished, so it doesn't look quite as nice. But it's just more of a proof of concept kind of thing. Here he has um, I I don't know what keyboard this is, but it's like an ortholinear sixty percent basically. Oh, is that a he has it built in there. Bionic? No, because it's wireless. Oh. Um, or Bluetooth or whatever. He says it has wireless built in. Wow. Um, anyways, so he has a, a price of $170 for a five-unit group buy. And that that obviously includes the keyboard itself built in. And I don't know, a mount, maybe a mouse pad? That'd be kind of cool, too. Just like have that already there. Or I did. It'd be really cool. It'd be a small tray and just put... Put your, put, your, put your trackball in. Get your wireless trackball, guys. Yeah, that could be cool too. But because if you have a mouse, you're you're already like so reduced on space. You're gonna be turning your yeah. cranking that DPI way up. Yeah, and so he does. He does have a picture here, um, like with his tablet or something, and where he has his mouse on top of it. And he says he can like use it for gaming and stuff. I'm like, man, really depends on what games you're playing, I guess, because you could not play a shooter with that little of mouse space. <laughs> But it would it would still be really cool for like very light games and just browsing in general, and uh, this is this is something I could I could definitely get into. I definitely need this kind of solution. What do you guys think about this? Is this like a like a really silly product, or is this like actually really viable? I think it needs a cup holder. <sighs> Zeal says my tw my twelve hundred. 12,800 12, DPI would disagree with you. Wow. No wonder you're so bad at Genji. <laughs> no wonder you're so bad at Overwatch. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a fun wow, idea. Okay. Visionaire oh, it's, it's... is saying very silly product with no real world usage. Wow. Really? It doesn't, it doesn't seem that bad to me. Maybe I'm crazy. Hmm. Jordan Cable says it's an idea. That's about it. Well, I mean, it's he has a real one, so I think it's a little bit more than an idea, but... Yeah, yeah. I don't know, like... For, for, for me... Could I really want this? Uh, I would just get, like, an AN Pro or something wireless, and something small and wireless where... Because, like, even if you're going to be back, sitting back, you're not going to be doing a lot of... You should, at least I don't think you should be doing a lot of prolonged typing... And if you're going to be gaming, get a wireless well, controller. 
Well, the idea here is a screw using a controller in a lot of PC cases. So I no. Um, but like from more of a browsing perspective, because I think for me a lot of it it doesn't really matter what the keyboard is. Like I don't care if what, what keyboard is in here. It's just the fact that you have a mechanical keyboard built into something that you can put on your lap that you also use a mouse on. So to to me that's that's really the big sell. I I don't think it would be quite as elegant to just like have a keyboard in my lap and like a mouse somewhere like on my bed. Like that doesn't really make that much sense to me. So I don't know. This, I I think I think to me this is a, this is a pretty neat product. Um, I am aware that Corsair makes one or lap, lap dog, dog or whatever. I'm not too familiar with it, but it's kind of the same concept. But I'd rather support someone cool in the community than. Um, then you know Corsair's the man uh, pers- personally. Not, not, nothing against Corsair, but I, our community kind of thrives on people supporting each other in it. So um, interesting fact: this guy's actually in the same state as me. Oh, cool! You should uh, see if you I can. Should, I should hit him up. Yeah. What how close he is to me? He's probably like every time I'm like, oh, someone's in the same state as me. Like they're on the other side of the state. Like, oh, <laughs> never mind then. <laughs> uh. Jimmy Rowland says, "You're not crazy. It's a fresh idea. People hate on change." Yeah, also true. Um, Virginaire says, "Hate on change. I simply don't see the problem it's attempting to solve." Okay, I you know different different strokes. I guess I it, it's it would it would solve things for me. It would make my bed computer experience better than it is. Is it necessary? Do I need it? No, absolutely not. But I do think it would help me. Mm-hmm. And maybe other people. And I, he has a, a five-unit MOQ. Like, it's not that bad. And he's doing like all the work himself, too. Like He's doing all the woodwork, handcrafted. He's doing all the, the build himself, I imagine, too. So, well, pretty neat idea, if nothing else. Whether you, you know, like or dislike it. Um, hmm. Let's get to uh, our sponsor spots, and we can. Then we'll move on to a little bit of discussion. Yeah, point. a little talkaroos. Little, little 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 popcorn drama that people Ooh, might want to talk popcorn. about. Popcorn. MB Surfer, thank you for the 100 bits and the positive vibes. Thanks, man. We always love positive vibes here and bits. Yes. Eh, Spe- about the same. Speaking of something the same color or similar color to the bits are these Hoggle Violets that are p- wonderful partners at Input Club now have available on Store for the pre-order. The production's already started actually and will be shipping out I believe late next month. So we're not waiting like three, two, three, four months. They don't need to do the whole 50 million key press. They've actually done basically all of that and they're just on production now. Now that, you know, Kiowa's back, everyone's back at their factories working hard um, to keep the hobby going. And yeah, so those are available. Check them out, as well as their other Hawko switches, which are nearly out, as well as their current interest checks like Plague and Arcane that we covered earlier. And you know what also crazy thing that they have, Brian? What? They have a speaker. On I, I actually, see yeah, that? I just saw. I, this is my first time seeing that. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I was scrolling down the page. I'm like, what? <laughs> but they, what they, have, they, they, have, they have different things now. So uh, check them out. Uh, maybe if you're interested in running a group buy uh, for a keyboard, for a key set, hit up Input Club, and maybe there'll be a possible avenue for you. Yeah, it almost seems like they're uh, they're starting to kind of compete with Mastrop a little bit in the way that they're doing things, which is, is cool. That's really cool. Mm-hmm run interest checks and group buys through them products that maybe aren't necessarily keyboards just like these speakers here and make sure you're while you're there you head over to the apparel section buy a top clack shirt helps us out a lot and you'll look awesome i'm wearing one right now and i look awesome i look better because i'm wearing this come on like don't you want to look better too i mean you're mm-hmm. probably already more attractive than i am anyways but you just buy one anyways come that on. the shirt will help even more yeah, yeah even more you have to beat off like all the, the keyboard ladies so many <laughs> anyway while you're there make sure you pick up some uh, some switches as well join that hako violet group by and you know maybe pick up some hako clears or something good stuff there um yeah also zeal pc 
is one of our awesome sponsors. Post a little linky there. You can uh, you can head over there and pick up some of what our favorite linear switches are. Telios, freaking awesome. I keep going back to them, and I'm like, man, these are so good. <laughs> they really, really are. I, I want to buy an, more of them so I can have like an apples so I can still have my stock ones, and I can have a yep. set for to lube. Yep, that's that's actually what I'm doing. I'm about to pretty soon, maybe even tomorrow, I'm going to rebuild my uh, well, not rebuild, but build a different configuration of my E6. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use stock Telios on a polycarbonate plate. Really excited about that. Ooh, but yep. While you're there, you know, pick up some uh, pick up some of these new Xylence that he's got as well. If you're into tactile silent switches, because um, as as far as I'm aware, they're the most tactile and probably smoothest silent switches on the market. Yeah. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, at least stock switches without getting any kind of weird combinations going on. And then uh, you know, of course, you have just the classic Xelios, which have been the most popular tactile switch in the enthusiast community for quite mm-hmm. a while now. Um, yeah. He's already on round 10, man. That's nuts. Shipping like out we, early April, too. Yep. And like we said earlier, um, the updated springs on the 67 and 78 gram and these new rounds, really, really nice. I've been using the 78 gram and the time key kale. Very smooth. Very nice round tactile bump. I'm all about it. Feeling good, man. I would say join the Zephyr group by, but it's already over, man. It's already, already over. over. But it is sweet. That's also sweet. Candy. Candy. You, you like that? I didn't, I didn't set you up at all. You didn't set me up at all. <laughs> but speaking of things that are sweet like candy, are these awesome new shirts that Mike has at Novel Keys. I don't know if you've seen his Novel Keys shoe shirt. Um, it's now available. It's a gray shirt. It has Novel Keys. It has a... Um, what essentially is a Vans, except he can't put Vans because Vans wouldn't like that. So on the label it says R M K. Um, so why are novel keys? Pick up a shirt. Pick up a mouse pad. Actually, no, don't. Not in the same order, but pick up a mouse pad. Um, yeah, and... join, join, join the, the group buy for the mouse pad separately, and then also order. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. a ton of switches. He's he's been working really hard with Kale to. Um, to get his box switches, he has so many different kind of box switches. He has that blue gray XDA set. He has um, stabs, except unfortunately he's completely sold out of uh, screw in to you stabs, as well as plate mount. He only has the snap in to you, but you can still get the screw in seven uh, U and six point two five. Have you uh, have you seen this picture of Mike on the Novel Keys uh, shirt post? Yeah. There's a, there's a picture of him wearing the shirt. He's such a goofy dude. Man. <laughs> I love Mike, though. He's so great. That, that face is just priceless, though. He's, a, he's a, a wonderful, wonderful individual. So good, dude. So good. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, pick up a shirt while you're there. And, of course, you know, pick up some um, some box uh, navies or box jades, which I think are hopefully restocked. Well, maybe he's not in stock yet, but I think that's coming soon. Yes, don't pick I, up Jades, I though. think all of his are coming soon. Jades and Navies are, just, are they're, they're the best cookies right now that you can buy. Yeah. Like, they're, hands down. They're, they're definitely they're just the best. definitely up there. Promo code, top clack, two words. Get you 5% off your order. Um, on the note section, you know, write Mike a poem, maybe. Uh, profess your love to him. Tell him how much you like top clack or that top clack sent you. Um, write a small haiku. Maybe write a story about a lost keycap in the forest. I don't know. But make sure you send some love his way. Speaking of love, we always get a lot of love from the beast in the east. Z Frontier are another sponsor of ours who is awesome. Uh, they have a lot of key sets in stock. A lot of GMK in stock. A lot of JGK in stock. Uh, running uh, the Elemento. And almost over... Um, the COD 67, which Brian and I have, and if you want to know more about that, we will have a review out this weekend. Um, they're closing. It's be the, awesome. Yeah, they're closing the group by either by date that they have, or by the time they get it was 75 orders, I believe, uh, which they are approaching pretty quickly. Yeah, there's actually only a handful of spots left. Uh, last time I just asked um, not that long ago, and there's there are only a handful of spots left. So if it is something that you want, make sure you join now because you're about to miss out on the chance. But uh, yeah, pretty awesome stuff. Like Huey said, we will have a review of it out uh, hopefully this weekend. That's the that's the plan. It'll 
it, it'll actually be our first ever dual review in video format. So pretty awesome stuff there. And no better way to kick off that theme than the COD 67, which you and I have both been enjoying quite a bit. So it's a sweet board. Heck yeah. Mmm. Mm. All right. Mm. So we will be moving into a Q&A pretty shortly here. But we do have a couple small discussion points to talk about before that. So if you have any questions, please save them for a little bit later. Also, shout out to all you guys for watching. We have, we have over yeah, 100 guys. viewers and have for a little while now. And to, to have over 100 viewers on an episode without a guest is really, really cool. So very happy to see that. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. So now that you guys are sticking around, I'm sure even more people will like to stick on, um, especially because of the nature of popcorn butter, as you might be wanting to get your popcorn out for our discussion topic for today. So posted on Geek Hack by our good friend Pudsey, he asks, Why are interest checks intended for mass drop now required to go into the mass drop subforum? So for context, a lot of you know that on Geek Hack, as a traditional forum site, there's a lot of different sections, and one of the most popular sections, there's two of them, the pop most popular sections is the interest check section and the group buy section. The interest section especially is really, really popular because it's a really easy way for people to go in, find out who's, who's promoting what, who's wanting to ex uh, share ideas for this or that, this or that. Very, very recently, the Geek Hack moderation team has decided any interest check for any product keyboard or keycap related that will be run on mass drop their interest check form must be posted onto the mass drop sub forum sub forums big all big vendors have sub forums are traditionally used for customer service customer support and asking questions but now for mass drop all of the interest checks that were on the front page of that section are being moved to that sub forum. Yeah. So what do you guys think about this? Obviously there are a couple sides of the coin. Um, you know, the argument in favor of, of mass drop is like, usually when you have an interest check on mass drop, things are already pretty much finalized. Like not really a lot of changes get made. Whereas in, you know, a typical, uh, interest check community fashion you'd have a bunch of people giving feedback and you change stuff on the fly before the actual gb starts um so you know mass drop ics would just be more of like a height building kind of thing as opposed to getting feedback whereas the more traditional interest check format would be well you know not only to gauge interest but get community feedback so the this thread is actually a pretty interesting read i've read through most of it already and a lot of a lot of people, a lot of uh, a lot of big names in the community are, are chiming in here, and it's it's pretty interesting to see. So I don't know. What, what do you guys think about this? Is this kind of strange? Yeah, this is this is a uh, this is this is this is a discussion. So we want we're just definitely seeing you guys in in chat be pretty active. You guys have um, interesting thoughts back and forth about this. What do you guys What do you guys think? Have you have, have you linked them the uh, linked the thing right? I, I linked the thread from Pudsey. Cool, yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's... I have I, I did not link the the new mass drop IC thread page. <laughs> which I, I I guess I could do now. <laughs> so yes, it is it is separate from the interest the normal interest check section on Geek Hack. Um I I I I haven't read too much into it, I guess, or I haven't thought too much about it because I just saw it right before the show, but Seems a little strange. So I guess one of the things that on Geek Hack side they're arguing is those interest checks are nothing more than hype slash promo. So is it right or wrong that an interest check is used for hype slash promotional content? Uh, so, okay. Is it still an interest check at that point? Okay. Let's let's start from the beginning. What is an interest check? Checking if core. people are interested is the simplest way I would put it. But I am not everyone, and what Geek Hack defines it as is a system for people who are interested in running something for them to get feedback, which is what they determine as interest feedback on how sets should be set up about X, Y, or Z. Um, they're trying to get 
they they want interest checks, I believe, to be used to gather information in order um, to do it. This is basically what Ghost Juggernaut and JD Carp, who have responded in that thread, have said. So that is kind of their their point on it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I kind of, I kind of get that, but like, I, maybe we need to be more strict on what an interest check is, um, with, with maybe mass drop, um, threads as well. Cause yes, Ghost Juggernaut says very, very first sentence he says many GBs that are intended to be ran through mass drop are posted to IC as nothing more than a hype slash promo post. So he's, he's effectively saying that the post is made not there to gain interest or have community feedback. It's there just to show people what it is and to get more people interested. Not necessarily interested, but just more people hyped up for it. Um, you know, you could argue that hype slash interest is the same thing. I don't know. This is this is a pretty controversial topic, and obviously people are chiming off in chat that you know we're right or wrong or this and that, and that that's cool. We want people involved, but uh, but yeah, I mean, if 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 you're going to make an interest check post. I think you have to be open for feedback. I think whether it's in the name or not of interest check, I think that's kind of been the default in our community. You know, you post an interest check, obviously people can get interested, but you know, you, you get to see what the community thinks of it and why they think these certain things. And I think that's, um, that's really, really relevant and really important. And anything that isn't that is not an interest check to me. If you're if you're advertising like, hey, we're going to be running this either way, regardless of whether enough interest is built or whatever, it's not an interest check anymore. You're either posting a group by thread or you're you're posting a, an ad. And ads are fine, ads are totally fine, but that's what you're doing. You're not posting an interest check at that point. All right, let's see what uh, what chat is yelling at us about. Also, chat. For technical reasons, we are not going to phone Pudsy in because I don't want to fiddle for five to ten minutes with yeah, OBS and Skype settings. That's just that's just reality. It's, yeah, it's not always as easy as it. We have to be prepared for it. Um, what what is this, this about the Elven kit? Everyone wants us to talk about the Elven kit. I don't know what that means. There's 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 an Elven kit on TTY. It's what Matteo also had on one of the recent. DSA Granites. It's just a sub legend or legend difference. Oh. Okay, cool. So Zambuan has <laughs> something cool. interesting to say. He just said the ruling just encourages me to not put any effort at all on the interest check and not mention mass drop. That's interesting. So what if, for example, if you ninety percent knew you're going to run something on mass drop? But you didn't have all. But, but you didn't have all your sets and kits decided yet. Should that be allowed on the Geek Hacks interest check, or because you're mostly sure it's going to be on mass drop, you should put it in that sub form? Or mm. should people just not mention who their vendors will be anymore? It was also stated, I think, by Ghost or not that, um, I mean, obviously, interest checks on Geek Hack have to be approved by a moderator, correct? Correct. But on Mass Drop, anyone can make an interest check without any kind of moderation. Essentially. Okay, so there, I guess there is that to take into account as well. But I, I don't know, man. That's tough. It's really tough. Hmm. <laughs> Amidst all this, WTF Sour says, "Quick, show your keyboard collection." <laughs> uh, not not right now. I'm gonna try to do like a, a like a family shoot where I take nice pictures of all of them. Um, here pretty soon, maybe even tomorrow. That'd be pretty cool. But yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show off that many keyboards on stream right now. Hmm. So, Photo Electric, one of the admins, did have a good um, response about clarification of what interest check section is about. And he definitely agrees that there needs to be a good description of what interest check is to help people manage expectations. 
and I guess there could be an issue on whether or not they describe it slash define it too far from what the community already believes it is. Because there's already, not while not precise, there's a preconceived notion in people's head on what an intersect is. Yeah, I, I think I think we're kind of just teetering on that line of what an interest check is right now in this this kind of debate, and that's probably what's causing the most the most drama. You know, we've had interest checks around for a long time. They're absolutely vital in our community um, because the group buy model is so important to some to someone um, to, to a community so niche like us. Because without group buys, like you know, we don't really get cool shit like, ever. And all, without so. interest checks or even even knowing about interest checks, because I think people people are now becoming very smart to it, but before people didn't realize advertising plays a big part on whether a set, mashup or not, makes sense. For example, yeah. 9009 round two run by Dixie Mac did amazing. And one of the di reasons it did so amazing is he posted a picture of 9009 every week consistently. And there are great picks on like every, lots of platforms. Too. Every single time they get thousands of upvotes and people knew that set that was ingrained in their mind that it existed and it was available on the group buy. So, but is that an interest check? Cause he always said like, Hey, check this out. It's a thing. No, because because it was happening. It was going to happen either way. There was already yep. enough interest based on um, the past, the the round one version of it, which, you know, it didn't sell very well, but all of a sudden everybody in the community wanted it, and it was going for $300 plus for a base set. It was already going to do well. Like, everyone already knew that. So it wasn't an interest check at that point. He was just building hype, which is fine. That's totally warranted. Absolutely. Post post all you want, man. Mm -hmm. Like, that's totally great, but that's that's not an interest check. Um, so JD Carp, the curator at Geek Hack, did ask a pretty interesting question. So in regards to Pulse Round Three, he says, you know, the po Pulse Round Three is actually an interest check because there are issues about it that Mito wants to get people's feedback on. But because it is something that will be already for sure mash up, is it going to stay there, or can we actually just move it back to the main interest check? Because Mito still needs to finish getting information about it. Like that's the yeah. actual that's the point I think that the the staff staff at uh, administrating team moderation team at Geekhack are alluding to but haven't necessarily explicitly stated maybe yeah so P Wade says that's the thing though I think hype building does count as an interest check that's a totally fine opinion yeah but I think. I think everyone should be on the same page, whether it's one way or the other. We need to know what exactly is an interest check, what constitutes an interest check, and what is just, um, you know, maybe just advertisement if there is a difference. So, um, I mean, uh, grammatically, when you think about like, hey, Brian, are you hyped? Was that was that me gauging your interest by asking if you're hyped? Because advertisements do that same thing. Well, I can be hyped about something and not be interested enough to like buy it if that makes sense that does make sense you can think something's cool um, but not want to buy it that's yes very yeah. applicable but even but 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 did you express interest about it do other people know your interest about it now i mean unless i I mean, that, verbally say something on, like, yeah on the show. i mean this is this is or, obviously or, like, just on discord or, this is just being know? pedantic but yeah hmm yeah, I don't know, man. It's a fine line, and people are obviously up in arms about it. So, <laughs> Adam Chevy says that that's what Top Clack is for. It's my interest check. <laughs> yeah. Kuji says maybe we need a new reserved term to represent quote soliciting feedback. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm interested to see where this is going to go, though. So, actually, MB Surfer, so I said, said, I wonder what Ripster's stance on it is. I'm pretty sure I know what Ripster's stance is, which is, if you're not a bot, it's okay. Anything goes. Just make it say about keyboard stuff. I feel like I haven't heard from Ripster in a really long time. <laughs> Most hands-off mod ever. He lives his life. 
Yeah. Hmm. So it seems like everyone's still pretty split on this. Unless they start... So people think that it should be okay unless they start a separate hype forum where people can just go there to hype each other up, you know? Play, play Don't Stop Believing and other great hype songs. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm kind of seeing it from both angles. I can kind of see interest check, you know, being an advertisement in a sense. But, I mean, in my eyes, it's always been... Uh, co community feedback has always been a really, really crucial, vital part of an interest check. That's just how it's been for years. Um, that's just... That's what how I view an interest check. And whether that's right or wrong is, I guess, up for debate. But... Apparently... Apparently, Geekhack thinks that um, they're very different, and they should have their own separate spot. I would like, for example, I would understand this more if it applied to everyone, but it only applies to Mass Drop. Yep. Like, what if someone already knows 100% that they're going to do a group, group buy with Store or with Novel Keys, or with candy keys or any other vendors like oh yeah this is 100 percent who i'm going with i've already decided all the kits i just wanted to let you guys know as in this interest check that it will start in one month mm. yeah it seems kind of strange because if you're if you're gonna do it for mass drop you kind of have to do it for everyone right like you should just have a separate a separate page at that point you're you're separating it like everything though like it's no longer an ic it's something different Maybe that's maybe that's okay. Maybe that's what they want. Maybe that's what they don't want. Um, Heinebush says maybe let an official vendor or member of the company post in the forums. If IC wants to IC something, then let it do it in their own forum. Okay. I mean, I guess so. But at the same time, the whole point of an IC is you know for people to see it, so you get more community feedback. And the problem here is now it's 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 more limited. Because let's, let's be honest, I'm pretty sure 90 plus percent of people who visit GeekHack only visit the interest check and group by sections of the forum. I'm one of them. That's, that's all I'm ever there for. And now because of this, less people will have exposure to information that would otherwise be very useful to them. Yep. Absolutely. All right. We've spent a lot of time on this topic. And whether we, we come to a conclusion or not is, is kind of besides the point now. But, uh, yeah, something to think about. And I guess maybe maybe we'll see where that goes, see if that changes or, you know, alters in some way or goes back to the way it was. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, let's save this other discussion point for another time. Let's move yeah. on to a Q&A because we spent so long on this one. All right, so now we'll open up to a Q and A. We've already seen a couple questions, but um, make sure you can uh, you can post those again if uh, we miss them. Use the the at top clack tag so we can see the questions a lot easier. It helps us out a lot. So if you got questions, we have answers, whether they are real or not. So bring them on. Uh, that one, Oscar is asking. I bought a Micro Arc Oxidation White E8 the other day and got it today and love it. Really, you got an E8 already? Oh, lost some people. He, I think he got an aftermarket for someone else who got it. Oh, okay, so if you guys, did you guys buy one from the group buy? If so, have you guys received it? I got one from the group buy. I have not received it. I did not join that group buy. So no, I guess uh, we're we're on the the end of that that has not received that. Krelbit is ask. Wait, what? It's asking, will Michael sue me for what? I don't know. Like, what are you getting sued for? Hmm. Kemba Sitter asking, what's your favorite linear Hako switch? None of them, because they're all tactile. The, the one that doesn't exist yet. Yeah. If they make a linear switch, I'd be interested in how it turns out, but kind of yeah. really stiff competition with Telios. It is. It is. Uh, I really do think that. Um, but you know, again, the uh, the Hako springs are one of the the cooler things about the switch, right? So like, you can turn that into like a linear. That could be as well. That could be really cool, as well. In my opinion, I would definitely use those. But I don't know. I all my Hakos are tactile. Whenever I use them, I don't. I don't know. Crazy. 
Uh, Floss MTG is asking, how do you recommend finishing Neon Genesis Evangelion in regards to episode 25 and 26 and the end of Eva? Just watch uh, watch end of Eva before 25, 26. Only watch 25, 26 if the mental portion, the mental psychological portion and psycho analysis of the show really interests you because 25 and 26 is literally just two episodes of cycle analyst a cycle analytics on shinji so you should definitely just watch the end of evangelion first because everything that happens in 25 26 happens concurrently with end of evangelion um so it's good to have a good basis on what's happening in the physical world first then watching 25 26 so because all of 25 26 takes place in shinji's brain and if you've watched that before, End of Evangelion, you don't know what's actually happening in the real world because it feels like you watch 24, things are getting hyped and something was about to happen, and then suddenly you're in this kid's annoying brain for an hour. And you're like, wait, that's it? And then, yeah. yeah. I need to rewatch the anime because I got like, I feel like I understood everything in the last two episodes. I was like, what am I watching? <laughs> All right, cool stuff. Level 100 Raichu says my camera is not in line with the border. Eh, it's fine. doesn't really need to be. I mean, he can change it if it's really that big of a deal, but I don't think it's terribly important. White Ren is asking, what finish are you getting on your all-brass E6? I imagine uh, yeah. that's for you because I'm not getting one. I do not know yet. I have not decided. If he has the options, maybe well, if people were talking about it in our Discord earlier black pvd bottom silver pvd mid black pvd top with the classic gold pvd plate mm. all that's... glossy so i have to use it with gloves oh man that's interesting oh are there is there a glossy versus matte finish on yes the you can have matte pvd we don't know if really? it'll be an option of offered but it's possible it's something that is physically people can do and do okay that's interesting that sounds like a logistical nightmare for doesn't that doesn't that, doesn't that wet your willy a little bit? A little bit, yeah. I mean, there there's never a world where I can afford an all brass E6, anyways, so it doesn't really matter to me. I'll just I'll just have to admire them from afar. Uh, Once saved gaming is asking, is the Tokyo 60 cheaply built? No, my prototype is is quite nice. It's not super heavy, but like we've talked about on the last episode, heavy doesn't necessarily mean better. It doesn't necessarily mean the quality is higher. You can have something light and still be high quality. Look at the look at the EDC community. Like, come on. Heine Bush is asking, how tall are you guys, IRL? I am six foot four, which I think is like 193 centimeters. Uh, sorry, let me let me do this real quick. Two. Yeah, so about 192 centimeters, about six, about six four. I'm terribly average at a wonderful five nine and five ten on a good day. <clears throat> yes, but you have an above average heart, Huey. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, five, five five ten is what I put on. What is what I put on Tinder? Five nine is what they what they get in real life. <laughs> But, uh, but, but. <laughs> is that kind of like when you said uh, I'm trying to think of like a, a non-vulgar way of saying this when you take a, a picture of uh, of your private areas and you try to get just the right angle just the right lighting so it looks a little bigger <laughs> I heard a joke from, a, from uh, I was watching Tom Segura, a comedian the other day and he had, he had a pretty awesome bit about that anyways back when, to the question when, Sorry she's about expecting that, the 7u and you give her the 6.25 <laughs> you give her the give her the 3u split space <laughs> uh mock, mock genius is asking does the tokyo 60 have enough space behind the pcb to fit the sound dampening foam in there if you can't check right now i'll pm you later also does the tokyo 60 pcb have switch leds facing north or south it looks to be all south facing except for the number row really Actually, I, I don't have, I don't have the Tokyo 60 PCB, 
I used my own uh, 60% PCB that I already had. So I cannot currently tell you anything about the Tokyo 60 PCB that will have the hot swappable stuff. Um, I imagine because of the, the sockets, they might have to orient some switches differently than others. I'm not entirely sure how that works. Um, I imagine they have the, the pictures of the prototype on Math Drop. Whatever that looks like is probably correct. Whether it has space for foam or not, I will definitely check that out for you after the show. Um, it might. I'm not 100% sure. But it should. Most most cases do. Um, Adam Chevy is asking, should I buy the Tokyo 60 or wait for the Rama 60? Uh, very, very, very different. Very, yeah. Very, very different, different boards, man. That's apples and oranges. I mean, they're both they're both fruit. They're both keyboards. <laughs> I don't know. I, the Tokyo sixty is is obviously going to be quite a bit cheaper, and uh, you know maybe a bit more portable because it's going to be a little smaller and lighter. Obviously, uh, Brahma sixty is going to be more of like a design statement, like a freaking work of art that just sits on your desk. Whereas um, the Tokyo 60, as Alvin very elegantly put it um, uh, in the previous episode, it's it's streetwear. Yeah, it's, like a it's, street it's, it's, it's your street keyboard. Yeah, which is which is really cool. I really like that that kind of uh, theme. Uh, Pluto nineteen is asking, would I actually use the couch sitter thing, couch surfer thing, over say a Bluetooth HHKB? Um, maybe. See, for me, it's not a matter of what keyboard I prefer at that point. It's what's the most comfortable to use while I'm laying in bed. You know, why don't you put would it I rather, Bluetooth would I rather, HHKB I, inside of it? Yeah, I could do that too. But a Bluetooth HHKB is also going to be twice as expensive as one of these things to begin with. So I, I am also all about value, and I don't mind using, you know, something cheaper for the sake of it. As long as it's a decent, you know, mechanical, whatever. I'll throw some Kale linears or Gateron linears or something in there. It's not a big deal. Because I could use promo code TOPCLACK and, you know, save a little bit of money on my switches. Yeah. Over at NovelKeys.xyz. Feels good. But no, I mean, obviously I'd rather type on a Bluetooth HHKB than a lot of other entry-level stuff. But to me, it's for me, it's more the concept and not just what board is in it. Um, Krellbit tags us and posts a link, but I'm a little bit afraid to open it because it's Krellbit. So I'm probably not going to open it. All right, I'll open it. Okay, so it's the please don't sue me, Michael thing. Oh, it's because Krellbit also has the top clack promo code for, for something. I think he was using it for lube. I believe so. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I do remember him telling me about that. That's, that's awesome. He did ask me. So pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. I don't know. Are you still selling lube? Is promo yeah, code top still actually. in effect? Is that is that promo code still in effect there? Because if so, that's pretty cool. Curl bit on the top clack train. Uh, Yamato two K two is asking a favorite key sets. Ooh. Nine zero zero nine. Um. I don't know, man. I'm starting to become kind of jaded with key sets. Like I like most of them, but I'm not like in love with any of them, I guess. Uh, GMK Space Cadet? Space Cadet does look really cool. But it's like, can you have a favorite key set that doesn't exist yet? Because um, until we see can it... You person, have a, no. Can you have a 2D waifu? I That's a better question for you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I imagine so. A lot of people do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair, fair enough. Space Cadet, it does look very promising. Obviously, it's not real yet, so you don't know 100% of how it's going to look in person, but I imagine it's going to be pretty good. What do you want my real answer for? So I do own or have owned um, Jet Systems Topra High Pro. Nice, nice. For me, it's, it's probably 9009 Cyan. Um, I do like... Um, Kekon's Dolch. Yes, I like Kekon's Dolch. I was going to say my second one. Do I have it right there on my X60? Yeah, that one's pretty darn good. Honeywell, also a, a top favorite for me. I like the, the more simple sets that don't have as many flashy colors. Alright. 
No Chance RPG is asking, what do you call a tactile switch with no tactile feedback? Is this like a, a joke? I don't know. I don't know, man. What do you call it? Pudsy's asking, when will we finally have him on the show? I don't know. When Maybe when the group buy for Red Riot begins? Yeah, when you're... When you're not going to be super salty. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Parakey is asking, what's a linear switch? I don't know, man. He uses the Kappa, so it's fine. <laughs> we don't have to answer it if it's a Kappa. It's all good. Ooh, this is a good question. MB Surfer says, I have $75 on Steam. What do I buy? I haven't bought anything on Steam you in so long. You should buy, if you want a fun survival game we can all play together um the new warhammer vermin tide 2 is pretty fun um basically left for dead in the fantasy warhammer universe go around kill rat people and chaos people with swords and bows and medieval guns and magic um if you're looking for um something strategy related depends on what kind of strategy game a good 4x games if you're looking for Waifus, um, the new Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash, just released on Steam. If you're looking for waifus. Which is basically Splatoon, but with girls in bikinis. <laughs> I'm dead serious, too. Like That's awesome. That's, yeah. Fantastic. All right. I haven't really used Steam in quite a while, because I play mostly Overwatch when I do play games, which it's been less and less lately. Um, Shadow3165 is asking a favorite keyboard size. Uh, for me, it's 60%, followed by TKL. Same Z's for me. Um, priority towards 60% for me because I, I like the small form factor for gaming. TKLs I love because of the way they look, and I do love to type on them, but I definitely prefer 60 for gaming. Melody is asking, wait, did you get a spot then? I think he's talking about the all brass E6. E6. Uh, I mean, I'm on the sheet, but I haven't gotten an invoice. I don't know if I'll end up actually getting one, but I heard some other people still are waiting on their E6 invoices, so it's going to be a, uh, a TBD kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Adam Chevy is asking, well, what is the best keycap profile? Uh, I mean, it's it's always preference, but here at Top Clack, we definitely prefer Cherry Profile. Yes, Cherry. Particularly the double shot ABS version that GMK offers. We need a GMK partnership, man. That'd be cool. I don't know what we'd get out of them. Like, it's not like I don't know, I don't know, but got the unique key full size keyboard. Love, we both love GMK. And, like, we talk about how much we love it all the time. Yeah, right? So, like, it would just be a natural transition. Hmm. Uh, send, send Christoph an email. I'm going to completely butcher this name. But, oh, wait, never mind. I figured it out. The Sweaty Yeti. Ah, I love that guy. <laughs> is asking, what do you think about the Tokyo 60 for someone's first mechanical keyboard? Great um, choice. Seems like a pretty great choice. It's reasonably priced for... A custom keyboard kit and it's going to be a lot easier to build because you don't have to do any soldering um it has it comes with uh gmk clip-in or not clip-in screw-in stabilizers so you just pop those on screw those in um you know maybe after clipping and lubing which is what i would suggest but then the pcb has kale hot swap sockets on it so you just push switches in just push switches into the plate into the pcb easy peasy that's it mm -hmm. so no solder required so it's pretty awesome because you don't have to buy any separate equipment to put it together I mean, except for maybe uh, a particular screwdriver if you don't have um, that size already. I think these were like just Phillips head, though, at least um, on the bottom. So, yeah, very, very beginner friendly keyboard. That's absolutely for sure. And it's like, it's nice, and, you know, it's, it's a street keyboard. WTF Sour says, why you guys use 60% keyboards? Um, because I don't need more keys, and I like having extra desk, desk space. I like how it looks, to be perfectly honest. Love how it looks. Yeah, yeah, I like it too. Because, um, especially with stuff like HHKB, you can make the board look really symmetrical, and to me that's really, really a 
aesthetically pleasing. And plus, like, all the best customs in the community are usually 60% or TKLs. Most of the best customs. Flux Capacitor is asking, where do I get pandas? Um, after Mech market. market. Place, places like Mech Market or you know, maybe on Discord or Slack. Geek Hack Classifieds. Um, you can't buy them like from a retailer anymore. You have to find them from someone else at this point. Zombie is asking all. Oh no, he's he's clarifying. All are south facing, with the exception of Escape and One, because of the USB. There you go. That's for your Tokyo sixty PCBs, I imagine. Yes. Jimmy Rolling is Jimmy Rollin is asking, what did you think of the modified Psycho? Wait, fit Physico modified Physico. I don't know if I know what that is. Can you can you link it? Norikan is asking, any more info about the Kira GB on the down low? Are you talking about the Info Club one? Well, if you are, um, this isn't really down low because they've announced it, but it will be under 200 US dollars for yeah. the base model. Which, which is insane to me. Because um, I imagine that'll come with, you know, everything. Yeah, it'll it will. Prob- it'll probably come with those, like, pretty nice cherry profile keycaps. You'll get the uh, the PCB that has the SMG RGB kind of like the K type, and I th- I think it has underglow too, right? It does have underglow because the bottom yeah, because is the bottom has uh, that is giant like, mill. No, I think it's a giant piece of milled acrylic. Acrylic, okay. That's so it was like it's blasted. like frosted, right? Yeah, you can you can yeah, you can blast. It looks, it looks pretty good. Acrylic like that. Yeah. So really excited about that. See, that's that's going to be really good value. That's going to be better value than the K type IMO. Hopefully we can uh, we can get a, a prototype or review sample to to check out on the show. That would be sick, yo. Um, also, it, it is coming really soon too, right? Yes. That's that, that, that's some that's some download information that we that a lot of people don't really know. It, it's coming mm-hmm. very it's, soon. It's coming very yeah yeah like. I, I wish I could say what I know, because I know things. Because I'm very me. soon. Let's leave it at that. But soon. Yep. All right. I'm still trying to catch up with questions. I'm about seven minutes behind, so we're gonna go maybe for it, go, go for a little, it. little bit, a little bit quicker. All right. So MB Surfer is asking Huey: Is the profile of the Topra High Pros the same as the IBM B no. Spring High Pro profile slash MT3? No, and MT3 is also different from Beam Spring. All right. Um, the sweaty yeti is asking another question. What's the best way to find about find out about your keyboard chores videos? Is the only way keeping up on Discord? Um, yeah, basically. Um, kind of. Be- because a lot of the times they're really last minute. Like Huey and I will just be like, "Wait, what are you doing today? Oh, yeah, I have this to do too. Let's let's just stream." So yeah, Discord. We always try to post on Reddit beforehand as well. Um, like we always do, but it is it is often quite last minute. So, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. But we always have the VODs up on YouTube as well as Twitch afterwards, if that's something you're ever interested in. But yeah, keeping keeping up with the Discord is always um, is usually the best way to know about anything before it happens for us, or as it's happening, <laughs> or as it's happening. Yep. CI Jason is asking, do you have a favorite build guide with the latest community mods and best practices? No. Not yet. So, not yet. It's all in our heads. We're going to be working on stuff like that in the future, but at the moment, like, all that's in our heads. We just we just do. We have a lot of projects we're working on currently, and once we kind of start to wrap those up, we can focus more on um, other things. I actually have I have most of my uh, stabilizer modification guide written. I just need to take some pictures. The and stab up. lab. Yeah, and then uh, I want to do one for switch modding as well. And then I think at some point we'll definitely do an overall how to build guide that will link slash reference those in the guide itself. So it'll it'll hopefully have everything. That'll be pretty awesome. Blazing Penguin ninety nine asking the real questions. Thoughts on Brigitte? <laughs> um, yeah, uh, <laughs> or however yeah. you pronounce her name. So it's as, German. So as as someone who almost exclusively played Reinhardt last comp season, for me she's a breath of fresh air because I can play her and not just hold right click all day. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I played a little bit of her in the PTR. I I think I played I played like one no limits match because like that was like all you get into. And then I played like one quick play or whatever because and then someone else picked it right away and I was like, ah, screw this, and I just left. So I I've, I've kind of played like one match with her and I thought it, she seemed fine. She's got nerfed, you know that. Yeah, I she's she definitely doesn't seem like a healer mm. that much. No, she's, more, she's a, that... like an assist healer. Like, because she, she can give the overheal, but. Yeah, That's... yeah. Like, talk to us on Discord. We can we can give you all of our crazy thoughts about yeah, dude, Overwatch. Yeah, and you can play Overwatch with us. We, Heck, yeah. We, 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 we video game. We're, we're with it. <laughs> we're hip. We're cool. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be this while you do it, so it makes us look even stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we have a we have a games channel in our Discord. Um, we have quite a few Overwatch players there, including Huey and myself. So we we get down with it every now and then. But uh, but yeah, she definitely seems like a cool hero, but she seems kind of just like, you know, a different Symmetra, I guess, in a way where it's like not like not like Symmetra, but she kind of fills like a non-healing role, a non-healing like support. Because like she heals, but it's still like kind of minor. Also, just want to say thank you, um, Sonia one two three four three two one for the sub. Thanks, man. Oh, my camera's over here now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Green labels asking MT three Elvish worth getting. Do you like Elvish Legends? If you like the Elvish Legends, do you like MT three profile? They looked pretty good um, on Granite TBH. Yeah. I would be really worried about them on MT3 because the die subbing on MT3, which if you watch my review video not out yet on MT3, which will be coming out tomorrow or this weekend, I have some complaints about die subbing on the MT3 profile. Find out more this weekend. Um, yeah, Melodit asking for Huey, who is the best girl this season, and why is it 0-2? Because of Dino Aids. Um, also, thank you, Toe Jelly sixty nine for the sub as well. <laughs> what a great user name! <laughs> thank you, Mister Keebs, as well for the Twitch Prime sub. Heck yeah! Yeah, um, Love you quick guys. shout out if you know Twitch Prime helped us out a lot. If you have Amazon Prime and you you you're not using your Twitch Prime benefit for any other channel, or maybe you didn't even know you had it, you get to sub to a channel every month for free. And that helps us out a lot. If you if you sub to us, costs you nothing extra because you already have the benefit because of Amazon Prime. So, you know, something to think about. The one kind of downfall is it, it, you do have to redo it every month. Like you have to resub. It's still free, obviously, but you have to choose a channel each month, which is kind of a letdown. Shadow three one six five. Thanks for the sub as well, man. All right. Uh, hey Brian, rapid fire us. Yeah, here we go. All right, Pepe Sylvia ninety nine is asking a thoughts on solarized dark picks. J Chan posted. Either of you get in on it? Um, posted on I... Instagram. I've not gotten in on it. Also, P Wade, thanks for the Twitch Prime as well. Happy we just let you know. Heck yeah! Um, yeah. I did not get it on the original solarized dark group buy, but I did tell J Chan I would probably be buying a set afterwards, so so he could save one for me. <laughs> but I did see the picture. I. I think I liked the renders more than the actual colors. I liked the renders more. The renders looked amazing to me. And then I saw, you know, I just saw this picture today or yesterday or whatever, and I was like, it looks good. I'll probably still get it, but maybe not as blown away. Um, all right, back to uh, a little bit of keyboard news. Matt to DLG is asking it Tina versus Tokyo 60. Tokyo 60. Probably the Tokyo 60, but Tina should be cheaper, so it depends on what you're going for here. Tokyo actually, 60. Actually, is the Tina even cheaper? 140 for just the case. One no, it's that's case and PCB. It's 110 if it's just a case. And then you still need switches. You still need no stabs are included in the 140. So then you still need switches on top of that. So let's add another Let's be okay, but well, okay. What's forty well, bucks? If you if you forego caps and switches, the Tokyo sixty is one hundred and sixty shipped. That that includes stabs and PCB, which is GMK screw in and Kale hot swap socket PCB. So already I, those two things already provide more value. 
and probably whatever the Tina comes with. Uh, cherry stabs, but uh, not screwing. Not not GMK screwing, and probably not a hot swap PCB. No. But obviously, your you know, Tokyo 60 pros and cons, maybe, because you're limited to the HHKB layout. Yep. Maybe that's for you. Maybe it's not. Tina, you have more um, Maybe that. you want a PS2-style-looking heat sink slash ridges on the back of your case. Yeah, and, or maybe... And, and out of the box for round one, that acrylic RGB strip. Yeah, so depending on your layout and stuff, you know, that's obviously going to change the way you view the way it looks. But I think Tokyo 60 is probably a better overall choice yeah. and probably a better overall value. For sure. Um, but either way, I, I think they're probably great options for the money. Flux Capacitor says, I got Halos coming, but where do I find Pandas now? Well, like we said earlier, aftermarket, man. Yep. That's all you got, and expect to pay a little bit, too. Zombumon asking, can you talk a little bit about your own secret key projects? Well, if you want to know more about my secret key projects, subscribe more to find out. Yeah, so YouTube link below the stream. Check there. We're going to have, we have a couple new uh, series coming up in the near future. We're always posting stuff there. So, you know, that's a good place to be. Obviously, hanging out on our Discord, I already know you're there, Zombumon. But, you know, join the Discord also below the stream. Usually you get insider information first. But yeah, I don't think there's not there's not really like a ton of like secret stuff we have that like that we can't really talk oh, about. Oh nice least. cover, Brian. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to think of like what is like really secret. No, we got we got cool things happening. We got cool things. Alright, um frick, dude. I'm like oh, there's so many questions. Go, oh my just God. go for it, go for it. We All go right. quick. We're we're gonna like actually rapid fire this now. Um, King Swami is asking, do you guys have any keyboards that are split? If so, which? I have none. Used to. Not anymore. All right. Ablotsky is asking a favorite plate material. For me, probably brass at the moment. Brass. Same as steel second. Close second. Melodid is asking, what are the best forums for hyping up group buys in your opinions? Reddit. Yeah, Reddit has... Consistently. Reddit has more more, uh, average reader count than Geekhack. I believe. Flux Capacitor is asking, how is your acrylic plate coming? Uh, fairly well. We ran into a couple snags. But uh, we... Sh- Actually, I should be receiving my final prototype um, like t- tomorrow. We're also waiting for like a so, PCBs to build them with. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's waiting a little bit but it's it's coming it's coming soon all it's my still cr- happening, yeah, all promise. my current pcbs i can't desolder because i'm actually using them for review projects <laughs> um wait what pluto 19 is asking orange 75 and orange pad you guys feeling it or no nah? nah. uh, i don't think i've i don't think i've seen it so maybe i don't know um tina versus tokyo 60 you already covered that Adam Chevy is asking, do you guys play WoW? I do not. Used to. Back in Vanilla and Burning Crusade. Sonia is asking, any budget hot swappable boards besides GK64 and Tokyo 60? Not that I'm aware of. Same hot budget, swappable... Same budget. K-type. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, K-type. Um, if you want to go really cheap, you can get the, the Team Wolf Zook. Like Z H Z H U Q U E, yeah. Um, that's like that. That uses the same sockets, and it's like a forty or fifty dollar TKL. It looks awful, but if you only have forty or fifty bucks to spend, and you want hot swappable. It's a pretty good option. Uh, yeah, thank you everyone again for all the the subs. We got a lot of subs in that burst. Yeah. That's nice. Zamuman is asking if you have to adopt Oblotsky or me. Who would you go for and why? Wow. Is is I feel like the, the subtext is whose renders do you like more? Mm, for me, that wouldn't be it. No. Oh, man. They're both pretty, pretty wholesome people. I mean, hmm. on one adopt, hand. Adopt it like, like oh, adopt as like a, a child? Like become your guardian? Is that what it is? Like, do, do I explore this in terms of, like, their culture? Because Zambuan's yeah. Spanish. Zambuan, Zambuan's German. Spain. So, I mean, yeah. on one hand, stereotypical German efficiency. 
On the other hand, siestas. Bratwursts or paella? I think I like Spanish food more than I like German food. But do you like German beer or Spanish beer? I don't know if I've ever had a <laughs> Spanish beer. So I, exactly. I don't know, man. This is tough. I, 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 I don't know, man. Can, can we just adopt really you tough. both? And... Yeah, can, I just, can we just get both of you? <laughs> I don't know. A boss, I get I get along pretty well with both these guys. I don't know. That's that's too tough for me to call. I'm gonna cop out. I'm sorry. I I legitimately don't know, and I'm actually thinking about it. I swear. Um, the sweaty yeti is asking either of you getting in on the Tokyo sixty. If so, what, which color? So, um, if you didn't already know, I have a Tokyo sixty right here. I have the black version. Um, did like an all stealthy ninja build with uh, silent reds, well, silent blacks with red springs and uh, some Gateron black blanks. But um, I did a build stream for this that's on YouTube and Twitch not too long ago, so you can check that out. Um, as far as getting in on another one, I don't, I don't think I'm getting in on one this round. But I did ask if Massdrop would send us a an actual production sample or not sample, but production unit to review. And Yanbo did tell me yes, so hopefully we'll be getting at least one of those in. So that way we Ooh, can do like a full mine? review. If because... so, can I, can I get it in rose gold? Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, you can you can review it. That's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll get that in. We'll do a review. You have one too. Yeah, well, the the product, the actual production one's going to be a little bit different. Obviously, and then the, the production model will have the PCB, which I'm a little bit more interested That's in true. Than, than a lot of the we'll other see. stuff. Maybe get two. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying not to be greedy, but Yanbo's pretty nice, so maybe maybe he'll say yes. Who knows? Who knows, man? Who knows? But yeah, if I got another color, I'd probably get silver, because I like silver. I don't know, man. Mod Genius is asking, are hot swapped switches as stable as soldered switches? If not, on the Tokyo 60, can you solder in the switches if you choose? No, you cannot, and stability of them depends on the plate tolerance. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, no, that's 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 about right. Yeah, you want you want your plate to be really tight with this. They shouldn't like wiggle around too much, though. That's a that's a really good question, actually. That's no, if your a lot plate of is, if, don't if, think if, about. if your plate's Gucci, then it's it's no biggie. Yeah, but a lot of plates not so Gucci. But thankfully, we got this uh, on the Tokyo Six. You got that integrated plate that only supports like one layout, so. You get really, really good stability from the plate on this board. Uh, MB Surfer asking, does a straw have two holes or one? It has one continuous hole. Mm, two. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Morning Coffee is asking, duck boards, ya yeah or nah? Only yeah. one. I'd never ever get another duck board. But I'd get one duck board, which I have already, so I'm done. Yeah. If I were to get a duck board, I would get the Duck Orion. Because I remember at the, not the most recent NorCal meetup, but the one before that that was at Waz headquarters, I tried an Orion there with the 62 gram lube vintage blacks. And uh, it was a pretty pretty darn nice typing experience. And th the sound got me more than anything else. Some, something about all of that metal just makes <sighs> makes it sound really, really nice. Zamuman saying, a Spanish beer. Estrella. What is that? Galicia. 1906 red vintage. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. It sounds too fancy for me. Mog Genius saying... So on the Tokyo 60, would you say the plate is as stable as a soldered switch, or is it slightly worse? It's going to be... On the Tokyo 60, it's going to be solid. You're not going to have to worry about it. Switches are tight. The plate is integrated. Your switches aren't moving. Don't worry about that. Oh, sweet. Caught up. Almost. Shadow is asking, what are your thoughts on the Nexus sliders? Um, I don't, I don't know. Cool idea. Don't care until they exist. Well, I don't even know what it is. It's a um an MX slider for Alps. We covered it oh. two weeks ago. Oh, all right. <laughs> I, awesome concept. Let's let's see how it works. Not the first time I've I've seen those things. 
All right. All right, we are fully caught up in questions. Oh, wow. Sweet. Just just, just shy of the two-hour mark. Rapid fire. Yeah, rapid fire for the way. There was a lot of questions today. I wasn't expecting that many without a guest. Yeah. Usually it's, usually um, it's not, not like that. That was really, really awesome, you know? But if you guys want even more awesome answers to any other questions you may have, feel free to join us in our Discord where we hang out, talk about keyboards. We talk about, actually, we talk a lot about food and drinks. We talk a lot about gaming, and we play talk games about about all the time. Yeah, talk about everything. We're all pretty. It's a really active Discord. This pretty is like wholesome already. Yeah, the uh, the link is below the stream. Just look at the click that little Discord button. It'll open up the thing. And it'll be like, hey, Discord. Um, I think you have to be registered for in Discord for like five minutes before you talk. So if you're not registered in Discord yet, feel free to make your account. That'll be hunky dory. Um, anytime you join, usually at some point someone will say hi to you, which is nice. Which is, yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, the bot will, then usually other people will as well. It's a very nice, friendly place. We got lots of lots of different channels, and uh, they all stay pretty on topic, which is really really cool. So depending on what you're into, there's probably something for you there. Yeah. So, so make sure you join that Discord and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube. Link is below. Subscribe to too. YouTube, and if you can, subscribe to our Twitch or follow our Twitch if you just want to see, you know, when the next big thing is or um, when we're streaming. Because even though we do this every Thursday, like someone mentioned earlier, how do I? What's one of the best ways to keep up on our build streams that we do? That as as Brian said, kind of last minute. Following us on Twitch would be really helpful because you'll get a little ping, a little notification, um, whenever we go live. Yep, definitely. And I really can't stress enough to subscribe to the YouTube guys. We're gonna be pushing YouTube content a lot harder, um, more consistently. So. I mean, we're we're still we're still staying on Twitch for the foreseeable future, but I just mean like in terms of VODs, in terms of uh, different series that we're putting out. You know, it's there's a lot coming to YouTube. There's a lot already there, and there's a lot more coming to YouTube. So make sure you guys tune in there because we have a lot of really cool, yes. really awesome projects coming soon. And speaking of more awesome projects coming soon, every Friday I do a new stream that I started two weeks ago. The Castle um, Build was it Castle Design Design. Castle Design, Design stream where um, Overkill, who is the mechanical engineer over at Input Club, does a screen share with me, and for two to three hours every uh, every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific, we watch him design a keyboard and we take considerations from the community so if you watched the last one or you have time to watch tonight the last one we actually have a google form that's still currently active on actual choices we're going to make with this case and the choices we make are going to be decided by the community a pcb is being made right now by their uh pcb electronics guy um this is going to be a real keyboard it's going to exist it's like a giant 128 key monstrosity that is a keyboard yeah, that is it's, awesome it's, it's a castle it's it's nuts. Um, we're gonna have little battlements on it. Um, I'm trying to push yeah. for a cup holder, no promises, but we'll see. <laughs> but check yeah, that man. out every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific. Um, check our YouTube channel; all the vods are there for build streams, typing sounds of which I'll have a Hawko Violet typing sound up very shortly, um, and reviews and other content we do. YouTube.com/slash/c/slash/youtube, Discord, Twitch. Awesome. Um, thanks everyone for watching. Um, hope you all have a wonderful night. Next week we do have a guest scheduled, which is Crowbit. Um, yeah, hopefully he'll join us and we can talk a lot about memes and the meme. Nice. Yes. Awesome. So yep, next week, same time, same place. We'll see you there. <laughs>